The Act of Killing, directed by Josh Oppenheimer, tells the story of the events in Indonesia in 1965-66. Following uh, the military coup by General Suharto, a huge killing machine was put into operation, purging anybody who was communist, because Suharto falsely uh, blamed the communists of trying to take over uh, Indonesia. It was the heights of the Vietnam War, which of course everybody was very nervous about it. His coup was supported by the CIA and people estimated between million and million and a half people were murdered within a year. And the story of the film is based on a group of the killers of one gang in the city of Medan who were responsible for killing of thousands of people. And the film tells the story mainly through the reenactment of the killing in different cinematic genres that they choose to deploy. Cuma ini, kalau saya melihat ya, kalau sukses kita bikin ini film, menyatakan bahwa film G30 SPK yang lulu, PKI kejam, tidak kejam. Yang kejam itu kita. Kita yang kejam. <laughs> kalau sukses, ini film. Makanya aku, aku... Ini yang perlu disadari, sebab kita segala langkah kita harus kita sadar. Harus kita sadari. Ini bukan masalah kesangsian. 40 tahun juga sudah, 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 apa namanya, dari luar saya. Tapi tidak semua kejujuran yang, yang dapat menjadi konsumsi publik. Saya percaya Tuhan pun juga punya rahasia. Kita sadar gali sekali, kita kejam. Okay. The army, after the military coup, recruited huge amount of gangsters, thugs, around the country to do the dirty work for them as a death squad. They happened to come across this group of people who are the heroes in our film, who used to be called the Bioskop Boys. The Bioskop Boys in Indonesian in Dutch means the cinema boys. Their specialization as gangsters was uh, intimidating all the cinema owners in Medan dealing with black uh, market tickets. And the army told them that if the communists will take over, then Hollywood movies will be banned from Indonesia, i.e. their livelihood will be cut. And they admit in the film that they were so obsessed by cinema as gangsters that they perform the killing according to what they've seen at night in the cinema. Mungkin ya banyak antunya. Karena di sini tuh banyak manusia yang yang dihabisi, yang mati nggak wajar lah sih. Yang mati yang tidak wajar. Datang sini sehat, sampai di sini dipukul, mati. Kalau dulu kita main pukul, pertama itu datang kita main pukul, itu kan darah banyak. Di sini kan, di sini kan darah, di sini kan darah banyak ini kan. <tuh> Jadi karena kelewat banyak darah itu kan bersihnya kan bau. Ya kan, jadi cara cara untuk jangan keluar darah itu inilah pakai sistem ini, ya saya peragakan boleh kan, boleh, boleh ya. Ya itu dua aja sini lah, mereng lah sana. Ini peragakan yang mesti peragakan. Beginilah caranya supaya jangan darah itu terlalu banyak, tahu kan? Jadi saya menghilangkan itu, saya usahakan dengan musik enak, saya bisa nari, iya kan? Bisa happy, sedikit alkohol, iya kan? Sedikit marijuana. Sedikit inex, apa namanya, estasi, estasi, sudah siap minum, fly, kita pun happy itu, caca. They love the cinema. 
And when they, they were given these jobs of killing these people, they thought it was fun. For us in the West, it looks incomprehensible that a society like this functions after so much, so many years with no recognition and no acceptance of the traumas of the past. And we believe that cinema can be a very powerful tool in bringing this story uh, to life. It's not the first time that reenactment is used in documentary film. The person who developed it seriously, also in an academic way, was the visual anthropologist Jean Rouge, a French anthropologist who worked in West Africa from the 50s. He developed, at the time, it was a revolutionary way of doing documentary films. And he said, if you just put people in front of the camera in the old-fashioned way, telling their stories, you get only this bit of the life. What he pushed, his, what they were called informants in anthropology work, uh, to reenact their lives and in, insert in their reenactment their dreams, their fantasies, their frustration. The actors or the perpetrators, they are pushed to go back to the memory and physically try to reenact it more accurately, more accurately, and every time you get a bit more information and they knew exactly how to perform and do it in a very accurate way. And of course, by him playing the role of the victims, you get a much, much deeper understanding to what went through his mind when he was torturing the guy. If you use this system, you get a much deeper understanding into the psychology but also into the mechanism of how this kind of killing machines took place, of what really happened in those dark days. You can also say we gave them a very long rope to hang themselves. Malam minggu, ayah pergi ke bioskop. Oh, nggak nggak gitu-gitu. Ada belum gini-gini nggak ada lagi nggak. Itu kan nyanyi nonton film. Berduaan sama pacar, beli karcis, tahu-tahu kehabisan, beli catut, pergi nonton berduaan. Oh, one of the, the main character talks about recurrent nightmares, and he suffers greatly since the killing. But in the final analysis, they. The general feel is of boasting, is of being very proud. They have saved the motherland from communism and they will do it again if necessary. Unlike South Africa, Northern Ireland, Rwanda, the Balkan, Cambodia, there is no trace of any peace and reconciliation, justice, bringing people to court, nothing whatsoever. It's the only country where up to a million and a half people were killed within six months or within a year. Even 40 years later, nobody ever dares to discuss the issue in one form or another. They are still considered to be heroes. They're still considered to be the saviors of the country. And they are very, very, very proud. The history is described by the regime as an heroic uh, battle against communism. And the tragedy is that in those little villages and the small towns, the perpetrators and the survivors and the victims still live next to each other. In documentary, you use ready-made made people and ready-made lines and ready-made uh, locations and you use them for, to tell your story. In fiction, you build a studio and you write the lines and you give actors to say the lines. But this film shows that the, the boundaries are completely blurred. Fiction and, and what we call documentary are completely interwoven. At a certain point, you, you don't know what you're watching. Are you watching Documentary, are you watching fiction? The HSC funding was crucial to this project. It's always difficult to crack the first source of funding. Once you get a substantial amount of money, 
already on the table, it's easy for other people to join in. But if, if your filmmaking, if your photography is pushing the boundaries of filmmaking and photography, this is pure research. Britain is very much a unique country and everybody looks up to HRC in a big way because many other countries are still locked in the 20th century or 19th century idea that academic research is only books and is only writing articles while the HRC made this fantastic decision to accept non-written material as pure academic research. In Toronto, the main news magazine in Indonesia devoted a whole issue to the film and for the first time they physically went and started to interview survivors. And then we met some people who worked in this, in this magazine and they said, well, they were absolutely sure that the government will close down the, the magazine the next morning, but they didn't. And now there's a bit of a snowball effect. George gave a series, we gave them a part of the HSC project, small home video cameras to, to, to families of survivors to allow them, because it was impossible to go and work with them directly, to allow them to, to make their own film. And this film is now being cut. So we'll have a second film which called, uh, it's called The Look of Silence, which will come up early next year, which is the second part of this HSC project. At the end of the day, that's what Josh <coughs> and me, you know, that's what we are interested in. It's not so much about what happens with the film outside Indonesia and how much will the film change the conversation in Indonesia. And it has done, because Indonesia is not the same anymore because of this film.